Hello, Namaste everyone. This is Sir Manuel. Welcome back to history class. Today I'll be discussing about the remaining subtopic of chapter number one. Name of the chapter is American War of Independence. Before I do that, let me just add one important point that I missed in my previous class. As you know that America was discovered by Christopher Columbus in 1942. However, all the credit goes to another person. His name is Amerigo Vespucci. Amerigo Vespucci is also from Italy, from the city of Florence. No doubt it was Christopher Columbus who first discovered and landed on the Bahamas Island. Presently, it is known as North and South America. After his first voyage, Christopher Columbus undertook another three more voyages and exploring the interior of the island. He still thought that it was India. That's why he started calling the native peoples of the Bahamas Island as Red Indian. That's why still today the native peoples of American are known by the name Red Indian. But you have to remember that the Red Indian did not call themselves as Red Indian. They have, they are known by different names like Mohawk, Cherokees, etc. Now back to our point. It was Amerigo Vespucci who explored all these Atlantic coasts and the interior of the island after Christopher Columbus. And he come to the conclusion that what Christopher Columbus discovered was not India at all. It was a new world that was totally unknown to the people of Europe in early days. Since then, what Christopher Columbus discovered came to be started called as the new world. So in 1507, the German geographer, geography philo Professor, in order to honor Amerigo Vespucci, he started calling the new world as Amerigo. From Amerigo, it's a Latin word from Amerigo, it comes to Americas. From Americas, it slowly and gradually, the word America came to popular. This is how America got the names. Now, back to our main topic for today. The first topic for today will be how did the war between the 13 American colonies and British started or how did the American War of Independence started? The immediate cause of the American War of Independence is Boston Tea Party that took place in 16 December 1773. In 1773, the British Prime Minister, Lord North, he passed a new T Act known as T Act of 1773. Under this T Act, the East India Company were allowed to do duty free trade on tea in America. This greatly hampered the American traders. So the main objective of the passing of the TA of 1773 is to protect the interests of the British trader at the cost of American traders. So at this point of time, the American ship along with tea arrived at the Boston port. Since then, some of the American, they dressed like the Red Indian Mohawks attacked the ship and threw away 342 tea chests on the sea. This made the British government very angry and they forcefully closed down the Boston port. Not only that, even the self-rule and autonomy of Massachusetts was withdrawn and British Official were appointed to look after the daily administration of Matsuset. So, slowly and gradually, there is increasing decline in the relationship between America and 
England. So in 1775, the Americans held an assembly at Philadelphia. Here in this assembly, 12 American colonies sent their representatives except Georgia. In this assembly, the American took a resolution to boycott all the British goods in America and also demanded the British government to cancel all those unlawful acts that was imposed on the American people. But the British government did not take any action. So again in 1775, Another assembly was held at Philadelphia again. In this assembly, the American, they sent a petition to the British government asking and requesting the British government to maintain the status quo or what is known as balance of power between America and Britain as that was prevailed before 1763. This petition is known as Olive Branch Petition or Peace, Ban peace Branch Petition. Here, Olive Branch stands for peace. This so that the Americans did their best in order to maintain and solve all issues between them. However, due to the Boston incident, as we know that Boston become and Mars is one of the important center of anti-British movement. Some American states started preparing for a war. Now, even differences of opinion broke out among the American. Some of the American totally opposed against the British rule. So those who opposed against the British government are came to be known as the Petroit and those Americans who still support the British government came to be known as a loyalist. Still then there are some groups who still remain who neither support this group. They came to be known as neutral party. So during this time we see there was the emergence of two groups or two political parties known as the Petroit and the Loyalists. So due to this increasing tension between the two states, that is England and America, even the Olive Branch petitioner could not remain staying peaceful. They even started prepare for a war. So for war, they need a person to lead the American armies in the battle. So the American state collectively appointed George Washington as a commander of the British, I mean the American army in their fight against the British. So now the war become inevitable, unstoppable. So the American state started collecting arms and ammunition. Not only that, during this time, Thomas Paine, he wrote his famous, famous book known as The Common Sense. This became a source of inspiration for the American people. Through this book, the American become more revolutionaries. Thomas Paine himself is an Englishman who migrated to America. And later on, he became the supporter of American independence against the English. So when the news came to the British government that the Americans were prepared and ready for the wars, the British government started sending their armies under their best and abil abilities commanders. In the beginning, the English army got an upper hand and they are successful in crushing those American rebels. Even the British government did their best in order to suppress the rebel and to capture the rebel leaders like Adam Smith, Patrick Henry, and Christopher Gates. Then, till 1777, the British armies got an upper hand, 
in 1776, another assembly was organized at Philadelphia. Here, 12 American states sent their representative and 55 representatives attend this assembly except Rhodes Island. In this assembly, the American draft their famous what is known as Declaration of Independence. It was drafted by Thomas Jefferson. This Declaration of Independence is considered as one of the most important documents in the history of subjected people. The first point, point of this declaration said that every human being have the right to live happily, freely, and independently. Point number two say every government should rule according to the concern of the people. The third point and most important point said that every people have the right to overthrow the autocratic government. So, this is a direct challenge for the British government. From 1777 onward, things began to change on the side of the American. After the Battle of Saragota, the English started defeat in the hand of the Americans. During this period, Benjamin Franklin the most capable person or the most successful statement of America was successful in taking the help from Spain, France, and Holland. So, these three foreign countries started helping the American in their fights against the British. So, in 1781, the British Famous general Lord Cornwallis was defeated by the Americans. The war could have ended there, but because of the irresponsible attitudes of the British King George III and his stubbornness, the war had to be continued for two years. But the English army could not make any much progress. At last, in 1783, the American War of Independence was come to an end by signing the Treaties of Versailles. By the, the Treaties of Versailles, the British government granted independence to the 13 American colonies. This is how America was come into existence. Not only that, by this treaty, England was for to, forced to surrender some territories to America, France, Spain and Holland. Now the next subtopic will be what are the factors that are responsible for the defeat of the English at the hand of the Americans? Point number one. The first factor for the defeat of the English is because of long distance between Europe and America. As we know that between Europe and America there, there is Atlantic Ocean. The only mode of transportation during this time was sea. So, it took many, many days, even a month, to reach America from England. So, armies, troops, arm, ammunition, and ration could not reach the British army came on time because of the because of this long distance. On the other hand, the Americans were fighting in their own land so they could get any help, any support, any materials at any time. So this was advantage for the English. The next point for the defeat of the English is the British government underestimated the Americans and their skill. The American people were fighting for their independence. They were full of patriotism. They are ready to sacrifice their life for the sex of their independence. They are fighting hard and so. 
So on the other hand, the British armies are just fighting for the safeguard of their commercial interests in America. So we cannot compare those people who are fighting with full spirit of patriotism and those person who are fighting just for a profit. The next point for the defeat of that English is that the English army commander were no doubt very capable, but they failed to show their skill in the battlefield. No doubt the American may not be so skilled in a battlefield, but they walk very bravely. Especially the most example is George Washington, the commander of the American army. Even though he may not be too skilled, but he was very, very disciplined and dutiful. This inspired the other Americans to fight for their land. The last point for the defeat of the British at the head of the American is that, as I said that it was Benjamin Franklin, a capable ambassador, American ambassador, who brought France, Spain, and Holland on the side of America. So, after these three countries support America, England had to fight a battle in many fronts. Because of this event, a war started in India between France and Britain. Not only that, after, the, after these three countries support America, Britain started searching all the ship that was whaling in the Atlantic Ocean. This made angry other those neutral countries like Sweden, Russia, etc. So the neutral country asked for to form an armed neutrality. So this again worked against the British. It stopped the British from checking and preventing any ship coming to America. These are some of the factors or causes that lead to the defeat of the British at the hand of the American. The next subtopic will be the result of the American War of Independence. The American War of Independence is very, very important. In the world history, before the American War of Independence, there is only one revolution broke out that is called Glorious Revolution of England in 1688. So, the American War of Independence is very, very important in world history and it had a far-reaching consequences in the world histories and politics. The American War of Independence not only granted the American people independent nations, independent countries, but other nationalities like the, Sp the American Spanish are inspired by the American wars. So, the Spanish Americans started demanding their independence from the Spanish government. At last, the Spanish government have to grant independence to their colonies. Next point. Due to the American War of Independence, the British government are forced to change their earlier policy of colonialism. Earlier, the British government saw the colonies as only a source of wealth and resources. But after the American War of Independence, we can see there is a changes in the administration of Britain colonies in Asia and Africa, particularly in Asia, especially in India. After 1858 onward, we can see a dramatic change in the administrations of British India. In 1858, the rule of East India Company was come to an end. Now, the administration of India was directly overtaken by the British Crown. The office of the Governor General was renamed as the Viceroy. Not only there was a changes in the administration of the colonies, even there was some changes in the internal politics and administration of England. After the failures of England in American war, now 
King George the Third, the British Crown started losing his importance. No doubt, after the Glorious Revolution of 1688, the British Parliament became more powerful to that of the Crown. But still, then, the British King managed to influence the British politician on his side. But after the American War of Independence, once again, democracy was re-established in England. Once again, the British Parliament became more powerful than that of the King. These are some of the important results of the American War of Independence. Most importantly, we have to mention that this American War of Independence have a great impact on the politics of France. As we know that during the American War of Independence, it was the French government who held the American in their fight against England. There are many, many French army who went to America and fight on the side of the American. After the end of the war, this French army they went back to France, inspired by the American Revolution. They started questioning and challenging the autocratic Bourbon King, Louis XVI. As you know that, in 1789, the Great French Revolution broke out. This French Revolution was carried out in the model of the American War of Independence. Like the American people did, the French people also draft their own declaration of their independence based on liberty, equality, and fraternity. Till today, these three, these three principles are the fundamental principles of fundamental right in the world history. Now, the, after the American Wars, the 13 colonies become independent. There is a great difference between winning wars and building a nation. So, the next important challenge to the Americans is how to unite the 13 states and march forward in a modern and progressive nation. No doubt during the wars, a confederacy government was formed who looked after two important departments of defense and foreign policy of the state. But this confederacy government is not enough to run a new nation like USA. Among these three 13 colonies, there is a lot of differences in terms of religion, economics, government, and society. All these differences have to be sorted out and they have to be united. So, the American people, the 13 colonies, they need to form a new law, a new constitution that will be common to all the 13 colonies. So, in 1787, a new assembly was once again held at Philadelphia. Here, all the 12 American colonies sent their representatives except Rhodes Island. In this assembly, 55 representatives from different states attend the assembly. In this assembly, they elected George Washington, the former army commander of the American forces, as the first president of USA. So, after a long hard work of five months, my American, the American Constitution was framed. This American Constitution is very, very important because this is the first written Constitution in the world, even though it is very short and brief, with only seven articles. 
although the American Constitution was framed, but it have to be ratified by nine American states. Only then the Constitution can be come into force. So on March 1791, the American Constitution was finally come into existence. But there are some shortage. So in order to overcome all these shortage, again in November 1791, by the 10 Amendment Act of the American Constitution, all those shortages were removed and by this 10 Amendment Act, the American people were granted the right of freedom, the right to existence, right to religion, freedom of expression, freedom of press, and the right to be trial by jury. All this right came to be known as Bill of Right in American history. So, the American Constitution is very, very important and it had some special features. The American Constitution said that America is a union of state. So, in America, the power was equally shared between the central government and the state government. Point number two, the American Constitution proclaimed the provision of executive, legislature, and judiciary. In America, according to the Constitution, the president is the head of the executive. But the American Constitution did not provide any provision for the post of Council of Ministers, like that of India. That's why when George Washington was elected as the first president of the United States of America, he had to create the post of secretaries and nom nominated secretaries for the smooth running of different departments. George Washington, he served for three terms. The post for the office of the president is four years. Now come to the leg legislature. The American Legislative Assembly have two houses. The upper house is known as a Senate. The term of the office of the Senate is six years, and the lower house is known as People Representative. The terms of the House of Representatives is only for two years. Now come to the judiciary. In America, the Supreme Court is the head of the judiciary. All the court in America run according to the direction of the Supreme Court of USA. So this is about the American War of Independence. Thank you. Stay safe.